<clears throat> Good evening, folks. All right, just a real quick recap on the dollar CAD. Uh, we mentioned last night in passing in the last few minutes of the recording, I mentioned that we have a market maker buy model here. Original consolidation, buy sell liquidity resting above that. Walked through all of the significant and salient points for the buy model. I mentioned that we would probably likely see it trade down into this breaker, but it would be better if it didn't do it. And we saw that here. I mentioned that we would be looking for a inefficiency, okay, some kind of uh, sell side imbalance, buy side in inefficiency, okay, in other words, uh, a liquidity void, okay, basically that is formed with an up move. And we'll look at a lower time frame in a moment. Uh, but you can see how handsomely Dollar Cat performed today. We have an area in here, uh, next area liquidity, buy stop liquidity here, and then we have relative equal highs in the form of buy side liquidity there. So we'll just mark those out so we do have them in our charts. That way I'm honest when I say refer to this or that. We did talk about it. So uh, we'll be looking at an hourly chart run above these equal highs as the underlying setup or framework. So that's what we outlined last night. And the actual formation or setups that we use for entry, uh, you saw me outline that on Twitter today. I did some recordings while I was working on new account setups. All right, so here we are looking at the five minute chart. This is exactly the same time frame that I recorded. And the only thing I changed down here was the notations as to what they actually are. Um, I was basically just recording price action and what my thoughts were about it, where the actual buys would occur. Starting over here, we have a sell side liquidity pool, low formed, rallies up, price drops down, clears the sell side liquidity. Our eye goes right to this area here. That's going to be our bullish breaker. Price trades down to it here. Bullish breaker is activated, rallies. Then here is the inefficiency. Okay, right in here is the inefficiency that I said last night in the recording. This is what I'm talking about when I say your model should be concise enough and understood well enough that you could write it on the back of a business card. If you listen to what I just basically said in my commentary on DollarCAD, you can write all of that on the back of a business card. Now, if you hand that business card to someone that's uninitiated, they're going to be clueless as to what it means and what you're supposed to do with it. But because you're initiated, you understand my concepts, you understand what I mean when I say you're going to be looking for an inefficiency to buy into. That inefficiency is right here. I mentioned that it would have to happen during a kill zone. Okay, and we're just going to put the parameters as such. Very simple, run-of-the-mill New York Open session. All right, so here we have the inefficiency formed during New York. Once this forms, okay, we have a buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. Inside of the New York Open, we have the buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency. In other words, all this sudden price movement creates porous price action in here. There's going to be pockets where there was not a, an efficient delivery or offering for all of the potential prices in here that could be sold at. So as price rallies up like this, price skipped up several, you know, basically price levels. And the way the market or IPTA, the interbank price delivery algorithm, will want to rebalance that is it'll come down and fill in all of this. Okay, so that's the essence of what makes a liquidity void a void on liquidity. 
It's not that there was an absence of any trading there. It just means that there was such an imbalance or rush to move higher that it needs to come back down and offer sell side. So I give the analogy all the time, delivering paint to a wall if you're painting your home or something like that. Uh, if you have paint and you apply it on the upstroke here, initially it's a real good, nice, rich delivery of paint. As you go further up, it starts to get spotty. Then when you want to come back down, you're going to go back in here and offer the sell side. So in other words, it goes up and everything's got to come back down. So between two price points, and I don't care what price point it is, a balanced price range would be price has passed both up and down between it. Okay, that's the nature of IPTA. That's all IPTA does. It All it does is simply looks to rebalance previous moves and run to outside of the present range to either engineer or neutralize liquidity above and below old turning points. It doesn't see your stop. It does not know what your stop is. It just knows that above those reference points, there's going to be liquidity there because that's how everyone's been trained to do so. And the industry still promotes that idea. Support resistance, you know, double tops, double bottoms, all that stuff. We take, we take that and we turn it on its head. So I mentioned that the signal in the formation that you would be studying for dollar CAD today was going to be in the form of an inefficiency today during New York. We see that occur here. Price trades down, hits an order block right in here. That's what I mentioned on the Twitter recording. Uh, from a free member's or student's perspective, that's what's being shown here in the order block. And then price rallies away, closes in this sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency, meaning quick sub movement down, there's an absence of buy side. The market's want, going to want to rebalance that. The initial buy off the order block here runs up and hits this right there. Now, if you looked at this, this entire movement right here, that is a price action model. That could be your price action model. I'm not stating that it should be. I'm just emphasizing that that's how simple a model creation is. If you can see this formation here, that is your model. Now, you wait for these to form on whatever time frame you like to trade. It could be a 15-minute time frame. It could be an hourly setup. It could be a four-hour trade if it's a, a swing trade idea. Um, if you want to be a position trader, you can do it on a daily chart. Um, Long-term investing, it can be done on a weekly chart. It's completely limited by your personal thresholds for tolerance and sitting in, in trades. I don't have that much patience. It may seem like I have like a lot of patience, but I don't. So I like to day trade, scalp, uh, not so much, but short-term trade, love it. And I like to look for my setups on an hourly and four-hour basis. So it gives me my really nice turning points, and it gives me my objectives for the week's highs and lows, what to look for, all those types of things. But for day trading and scalping and practicing, you can do so many exercises each day with several pairs by either hindsight study or watching price action live. If you do not have the ability to watch it live, the best thing you can do is invest in I mentioned this. One of the members of my Twitter following asked what, uh, what platform I use to record. It's Camtasia. So if you could just turn on your recording and let it – even if you have the screensaver pop up, uh, it will still record your screen. So it won't burn into your screen. You know, that way you can watch price action and come home later on. Compress the file. Make it as short as you want. Reduce it to size, and I'm not teaching Camtasia here, but nonetheless, it's a wonderful resource if you don't have the ability to watch live price action and you want to teach yourself watching real data, real price action movement. That's a surest way. If I was able to go back in time and take something with me, that's what I would do. I would love to be able to do that because it would shorten my learning curve and take a lot of years off of my understanding and requirements for knowing what I know. But the next uh, order block is here. Price rallies away from that, comes right back down, hits it, and that was the alternative entry. So if you didn't buy here, 
you can buy here. Now this entry here is a London close entry. Notice there's no mention of that in the recording. It's just I'm telling you where it's happening. The turning points are occurring at key reference points to time of day. This area in here is New York open. This in here is London close. This level here is the equal highs or our buy side liquidity pool from the hourly basis. 30 pips above that, that's what we're looking for for a potential sweep on stops. 30 pips above that takes us up in here. Essentially, that's the bodies of the candles. And then we see a little bit of a give back. Price rallies back up, starts the range, and goes into the rest of the day, closing off the high. If you see a setup like this, okay, fill the void and equal highs, that is a price action model. You can build a trading plan on that. You don't need anything else but just that. You don't need anything else except for the void, filling it and coming back up and hitting a bearish order block because that's what it did here too. Now, I just gave you four price action models that quick. When we discuss trading plans or your setup or your model, you may have one or two bread and butter setups that you'd like to see. Once you understand that pattern, you wait for it to form. If it doesn't give it to you, then you don't do anything. But because these are my creations, these are my concepts, I can see them universally. I can see them in all time frames. I can see what patterns are setting up. I like my certain patterns over other patterns, and I, I look for them first. If I don't see them, I can look for alternative setups, which are just as good, but like anything else, you, you have your favorite football team, you have your favorite car or your favorite place to eat at. Everyone has their own preference. Price action trading is so deep, it will allow you to have your own specific model, and you don't really have to feel like you're mimicking me because that's exactly what you're not supposed to be doing. You're not here to mimic me. You're not supposed to be an ICT clone. You're going to find a price action model that suits your personal tastes that you can easily see in price action. And there's much more than I just covered in this video, but they're easy. These things are easy to see. If you went through all of the tutorials for free, those setups that I just mentioned here for quote unquote price action models, they are the ones that I taught. And if you look for them in the teachings, they're not spelled out like that, but you can't appreciate the simplicity of what I just said until you go through the entire mentorship because you're going to see there's times of the year because of seasonal impact, uh, just the order flow that comes in certain times of the year, certain months are better than others. Certain conditions are presented on higher time frames that are supportive of certain patterns and not supportive of others. So you need that full calendar year to flesh out a really solid model because there's going to be times where the market structure is going to imply that you do nothing and you are going to be comfortable and not feel so antsy okay, or anxious about not doing anything. You're comfortable because you know what you're doing and you're not rushed to get in because you know your setups will always be there. If you can frame your setups each week on something as simple as this and you get good at it my advice is do not stray from that because as soon as you start doing something else or try to make it fancy or try to make it highly technical or you want to make it you know bloated with all kinds of you know unnecessary things it will diminish its performance and it'll also provide more things for you to be worrying about you want very simple uh, decision makers to open high, low, and close, what day of the week is it, and what time is it. That's it. That's it. That's all you need. If you know those things, you can work within price action, and you can study so many opportunities each week inside of intraday price action. If these candles were daily, in individual daily candles, this would be an, an enormous amount of potential in terms of pips. There's nothing differentiating this study 
as it relates to its core tenants and the salient points that are being shown here, if you apply it to a daily chart, it's the same thing. It's absolutely the same thing. More pips are available. It requires a whole lot more time. And if you watch that Twitter uh, recording I, I shared, I put the time on it so you can see how long the video really was and how long time took to get from down in here all the way up into here. It, you have to submit to that time. So when, when we look at price action moves or, or things that I've shown in the past or basically things that I've executed on, the element that's missing and that is the biggest barrier for you when you start doing it yourself is as soon as you get in the trade, you're impatient. You want to see it go right to where you want it to uh, go in terms of your target and be out of it. And it doesn't work that way. I want to remind you constantly that the submission of time is required not only for your learning, but also for the trades to pan out. You can't rush it, so you have to submit to it. And that is a very, very hard lesson, and it requires patience. That patience is developed and cultivated by practicing, practicing, and practicing. Just because you watch me do a video and record something, you can't transfer that to you. It has to be done on an individual basis, and that's what requires the work part of it. So studying, seeing things, you don't always have to know where it's going. Like, you don't need to go all the way up to the 30 pips. Your model should have been, uh, as a starting one, uh, 10 pips above, or maybe it hits this level, like I taught on baby pips. Once it hits this level here, you're done. You're trading previous day's highs and lows. This is a previous day's high and low because it's equal highs of a previous day seen on an hourly chart. We don't need to uh, necessarily know what day it is to be uh, a, a model for practicing. We know at that level, if we get to this price point, we could take 80% of the trade off of our exercise and then take off another 10% of the, of the original position at 10 pips above the, this equal high, which is being shown here with this line. And again, this is the hourly chart equal highs these highs here so th this line is just being shown on a like a maroon basis here so you can do a model where it shoots to the um, high and you get out so take something right there because sometimes it'll just go right above it one or two pips and then trade down and maybe scare you or maybe come all the way down deeper run some stops and then send it higher those are the ones typically that i get burned by and that was one of the reasons why I started incorporating partials in my trading because you have to you have to pay yourself because the market's not going to do it for you. The broker's not going to say, hey, look, he's, he's been doing really good. Let me help him out. You know, he's got 200 pips in this move. Let me just make sure you take something out. It doesn't work like that. You know it doesn't work like that. So you're in the captain's chair. You're in the driver's seat, so you have to drive this thing. So the way you formulate where you take partial position exits or targeting – uh, you have to have that in before you do the trade. So you you note it on your chart so that when the price trades to it, you execute there. You don't look at it like a deer in headlights. Oh, it's running up here. You know, it's going to go to 134. You'll lose sight of everything. And it could go to 134. It could go to 137. It could go whatever it wants to. But while you're in the trade, you need to have your predetermined scalings. Where are you going to take partial profits? How much are you going to take out? And stick to that. And over time, you'll build a great deal of experience and confidence, which is what required to sticking to your price action model. So hopefully you found this insightful, and I will talk to you guys again Friday night with a weekly review. Until then, I wish you good luck and good trading.